Here in America, I think we are facing the deadliest virus that's right in front of us that we've probably ever seen in our history. Now let's talk about why I say this and what it is. And I honestly believe you will agree. I believe at least the majority will agree that this is true. Let's jump into it today. The video starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so much for being here today. It is a beautiful, beautiful morning. We still have not had rain, but boy, is it just a pretty day. We've had about 70 degree uh, morning, so it reminds you of fall. I don't know if you can tell, but right out here in this field, that's where a lot of those new cows are. So if you want to know a little bit more about our new cows, go check us out on the Max Life Vlogs. Uh, go over there, watch the videos. You'll see our family and you'll see some enjoyment and how we raise our family on a farm and on a homestead. So if you're new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or thumbs down. Our goal for this channel is always to bring uh, truth and reality, but also just talk about sustainable living in a preparedness sense on our homestead. So let's jump into today's video about truly what is the deadliest virus and how it is affecting 99% of people. The terms that we hear when it comes to the last three to four years, when we start hearing things such as a sickness or outbreak, a virus, a lot of those terminologies scare us to death because we have families, we have moms and dads, and so we're worried that something may go wrong, something may happen to them. Well, today's virus that we're going to be talking about does affect 99% of people, and it will make people suffer, and it will cause issues in their life. What is it? It's the media. We are pushed and pressed on different things, different outbreaks, different sicknesses, the polarization, the politics, but the truth be told, all of it stems from one sickness that has been shoved down our throat from media. When we believe the media, I think we honestly believe we're either sicker or even more impoverished, depending on what political side you're on. We have fear, we have panic. I mean, it's kind of what we do. Think about the advertisers. The biggest advertiser on cable news is pharmaceuticals. Is that not crazy? And what impacts our life more than anything? It's the media how they manipulate the stories, how they tell us everything that's going on, how every one of them are pretty much all tied in together. I think that that's what makes YouTube and, and Twitter or X, however you want to call it, I think that's what makes those platforms so unique and so powerful because uh, not only are we able to just speak from our home here in South Mississippi and hopefully impact you, not to change your thought pattern, not to make you believe something like I believe, but make you do the research to say, you know what, maybe they aren't telling us everything we need to know. Maybe some of these YouTube people or these Twitter people who are just normal people like us that's not dressed up and have a script maybe all of a sudden they may have some truth to what they're talking about so let's jump into a few little things that I think we should be looking at when it comes to how we view the media but also how do we gain wisdom from what they're telling us so you know they're pushing these newer outbreaks these newer uh, variants that have come around that is going to cause so much issues and catastrophic events here now, what is done, no matter if people say they trust or distrust media, they still watch it and it still goes into their brain and it still makes them have a little panic or maybe have a frantic thought. And, and what, then what happens is this, even in South Mississippi, even in my little town, uh, we've seen nursing homes contemplating you know, the way people come in and out, maybe uh, are they going back into some kind of procedures or protocols, that's what we've heard, we didn't hear the big terms of lockdowns yet, but it's just procedures. I've already went in Walmart and there's been people wearing more masks than they ever have before. But why? Not because they believe their doctor may have said that's the wisest thing to do. It's because we've been told that all of a sudden this is coming out and they believe what they're hearing. No matter if they say well, they trust the media or not, they still take it in and they still take parts of it and believe it. So now we build a populace that is very much influenced by the media. Well, if both of uh, the right and left uh, and really when you think of like Fox News, CNN, uh, you know, the bigger players, they're all talking the same thing with a little bend uh, one way or the other, but ultimately they're affecting you and they all kind of feel the same way and believe the same way. That's going to also affect you as a person. Think about the things that has affected you in the last 10 years, 15 years in the media. The way we look at marriage, the way we look at our children and how the children are not our property, they're the government's property. Don't say that the media has pushed against their narrative. No, they've pretty much embraced it by the way they, 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 they play on words. 
So our, our view of marriage, family, children, all that's changed. 10 to 15 years, all because one virus. Because if media was doing their job, remember the whole point of having uh, you know, uh, investigated journalists and all the, the point of having news and journalists was to hold accountable the government. They kind of worked for the people. They were the kind of the spokesman for the people. Well, that's not anymore. Really, they're just talking heads for the politicians and the, uh, you know, the, the, the agendas being pushed. So we see the teardown of the family. No one's making the hard decisions to call out, you know, these city situations where all the cities are literally falling to pieces. None of these big cable news networks are even touching the fact that they're all ran by one party and all have been destroyed. These people have been destroyed and living in poverty based on one thing. But we don't have enough independent journalists. We don't have enough news media touching those issues. And then we go into things like wars. It's amazing that we have the technology to see what's going on all across the world. However, here we are, we have a war going on that we are investing too much money in, that we're not helping our local people. We're not even worried about our border, we're worried about their border. We're not worried about taking care of our people this in catastrophic events. We're worried about taking care of some other country's issues. Now, do I believe we need to help other people? Yes, but we gotta first take care of our place. I think about this, I, had a, uh, I heard uh, Patrick Mitt David, P PBD podcast, say this the other day, and I thought it was brilliant. If me and you were in a room, and our children were there, wouldn't you say we care about the children? If something went down, we would want our children safe. We, we love children. I love my children, I love your children. But just being honest, I love my children probably a little bit more than I love your children. You would say the same thing as a father or mother or caregiver of your child. You love your kids a little bit more, so you wanna make sure not only all kids get safety, but ex specifically yours. Now what I mean by that is this, I want the world and I want all these countries that have freedom to have prosperity, to be safe and not have any issues like Ukraine's dealing with. But ultimately, if I can't take care of my own children, my own freedom, my own prosperity here in America, how can I dabble in some other area when our cities are destroyed and our borders messed up? But you know what? We don't hear a lot about that. We hear the fact that it's okay. All these, they, they allow these talking heads for the administration to come on and say, our border is strong, our cities are okay, and never really push against. They'll push just enough, but never really actually say it's an issue and we need to address it, like they should as journalists. Think about the war as we were talking. When you hear our media talk about it, we hear the fact that we're investing in a, in a, a great opportunity to take care of Russia. But then when you hear the people like uh, the interview with uh, the Hungarian president with Tucker the other day, or you hear about some of the leaders that are on that side of the world, that's actually the ones that should be impacted, the ones that see it for what it is, they're saying Ukraine doesn't have a chance. So what's the truth? What are we being fed? Are we actually being told truth through our media? Or are we actually seeing truth when these investigative journalists, these smaller people, these in, these influencers, these people like Tucker that's on platforms, that's talking to the people close to the situation? When we start believing everything that we hear from big media, then all we are are taking in the propaganda that they're spewing from the administration. And I'm not just saying from one part or the other. I actually believe that when I think of the Bush Clintons or the Obama Bidens, I actually see about the same. So they're going to tell you what you want to hear. And 99% and of people, they, they honestly believe it. They truly believe it. The point of the video is not to just rant about media. What I want you to do is as you take in media, you have to understand that you need to seek other guidance. You need to take what they tell you and say, can I listen to this and can I trust this? If we hear that there's another sickness or outbreak, we should take it serious as in saying let's do some more research on it is this something I should be worried about just this week there was two people that that developed a, a, a sickness in our church now did, did was it catastrophic no they just stayed home and and didn't bring their sickness to church did the whole church shut down and freak out no we we thought about it as civilized adults and everybody did what they were supposed to do the people that were sick didn't come the people that were not sick they came that's how we should live we should have the freedoms and, and the uh, liberties to make those decisions based on what we think not for what someone is thinking for us but when we are inundated with 24 hour news and you're inundated with stuff that uh maybe the bad stories or the the narrative that they want you to hear then you're gonna believe it no matter if you think you believe it you are believing it 
because you're gonna start, oh, why? Well, maybe I should wear a mask. Maybe I should do this or that. So this is what I do. I literally do not have any access to any cable news on my television. I don't have a Fox News subscription. I don't listen to Fox News. I don't have the app. Uh, I don't do that with CNN, MSNBC, any of the big players. Because I know that whatever I'm hearing from them has been scripted and it's pretty much uh, gonna be one-sided. My goal is to stick to independent news sources that does not have an agenda. Typically, that's just what I listen to. Does that make it right or wrong? No, I want you to be the judge. But if you are listening to those uh, bigger media sources, make sure you are also looking at some independent sources too. Make sure you are looking at some personal people on Twitter or on YouTube. Not to, not to do, I mean, again, not to do the same thing. You don't want them to influence you to a point where um, you, you, don't, you don't do your own research or you just trust them wholeheartedly. Don't do that either. You need to look into what they're saying see what the reliable and true sources are and really find wisdom in it. It's like me, I, my goal, I hope I can teach you everything you wanna know when it comes to preparedness or building your pantry or homesteading or how to milk a cow. I, I hope you love listening to that. I wanna tell you my perspective on things, but remember, it's my perspective, it's my opinion. Uh, and if you share some of those things, great. But bottom line is you need to build your own perspective, your own opinion to know what's best for you and your family. Like we talked about with the children a while ago. I know how I want to raise my kids. I know how I can protect them. I know how I want to love my wife. I want to know how I can protect her. But if I look at that a little bit different than you do, that's okay. That's the part of freedom and liberty. However, when we work together and see that the fact that there is one person that's pushing against our families, there's narratives that's pushing against our families, there's media that's pushing against our families, there's different things that we should all be looking at I think that will help us be stronger, help us be wiser, and make better decisions based on this virus is dangerous, the media. So guys, give me your thoughts. I know I do a lot of different content when it comes to homesteading, sustainability, prepping, food preparedness, uh, and then current events. Let me know what you think about our content. What do you like best? What do you like hearing more about? Every new day brings new problems, and our goal is to work together as a community to find the best and wisest decisions. Really, not for me, not for just you, but for the people that are around you, your family. Guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Happy homestead, y'all.